Welcome to Every Coach Needs a Coach, a podcast for coaches of all sports and all age groups to learn from coaches and people they may otherwise never have the chance to meet. Today on C1, Do, and Teach One, we are talking about influence. And I'm going to give you guys another story from the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. You're actually getting two today. Um, the moral of this story is give people a fine reputation to live up to. Give people a fine reputation to live up to. So it goes like this. Someone hired a house helper. But just report, before she reported to work, he heard some bad reviews about her from a former employer. When the girl came to work, instead of writing her off, the man said, Nelly, I spoke the other day to a woman you used to work for. She said you were honest and reliable, a good cook and good at caring for the children. But she also said you were sloppy and never kept the house clean. Now, I think she was lying. You dress neatly. Anybody can see that. And I bet you keep the house just as neat as your person. You and I are going to get along fine. And they did, because he had given Nelly a good reputation and an ideal image to live up to. So that's the first story. There's another story in that book um, about a little boy who, who wet the bed. Uh, that one goes like this. So when the little boy had to share a bed with his grandmother, he would wet the bed almost every night. Sometimes he knew he was doing it, too, and he still wet the bed. So... This is kind of like the suckling calf uh, episode we talked about yesterday and combining that housemate story you just heard. So to fix the bedwetting, the boy's mother and father dressed him up real nice and they took him to a furniture store to pick out his own bed and his own mattress. And they introduced him to the salesman and they told the salesman, this young man here is here to pick out his own bed. And the salesman then proceeded to treat the boy as if he was a distinguished grown up. And he showed the boy all different kinds of beds and when the boy's parents saw one that they liked, they kind of winked at the salesman who kind of went into his spiel and he told the boy all about how wonderful this particular bed was, right? The wood that it was made out of and the country it was made in and the tools that they made that they used to make it. And once the boy was convinced, he, he proudly said, I want this bed. Uh, so when it was delivered, the boy's father said to him, son, surely a young man like you is too mature and too grown up to wet this bed. And the little boy agreed and he got all kind of kind of puffed up and he said that oh, I won't wet this bed. You know, I'm, t I'm too big for that. And the point of the story is this this was his bed, right? It was one he picked out himself and he took a lot of pride in it. So he was going to treat it well. And he never but the wet the bed uh, after that. So he got a fine reputation to live up to, too. And everyone got what they wanted without an ounce of an argument or conflict. Um, I love to do this with my players. Uh, I do it with my patients too sometimes, but I'll tell them like, you're too good to take that kind of shot, right? You're too smart to throw that pass. Um, you know, you, you, you guys are too good of a team to be arguing with each other, right? You're too close knit to be arguing with each other. Something so simple as that, like makes them realize like, you know what we are. And it does it in a way that conveys that I believe in them. Right. And I do. It's, it comes from a place of, of being genuine. Um, and I love giving the idea of like, you can, this is, this is where I think your potential is. You can reach it. Right. Or you can strive to reach it. And in that process, get better. So um, those are my two stories for you. That is our week on influence. Um, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for spending some time with me today. Keep getting better every day.